we get customers that come in daily, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of them don't know how to tie a hook on, you know, so we'll show them the best knots to use to tie a hook on. And then some will, you know, they'll come up to the register and we'll start talking to them like, hey, you going snapper fishing this weekend? And they're like, yeah, we're going for the first time. And they, they come up with two ounce egg sinkers. And we're like, well, we need to get you some different sinkers, you know, and, you know, so you educate people and you, you and people remember that, you know, if you spend five minutes with somebody and you show them and explain to them why they need to be using this bait or using this tactic to go fishing and they go out and they catch fish, they'll never forget that, you know, you, you've made a customer for life and that's how you got to treat everybody that walks in through the door. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Since we started this Retro Bass channel a few years ago, one of my favorite parts is the interaction I get to have with you guys in the Retro Bass and comment section. I can't tell you how many great leads I've gotten for old school lures, and perhaps more importantly, leads for great old school tackle shops. Well, one of the tackle shops that shows up most in the Retro Bass and comment section happens to be just behind me. And I can't tell you how often I get some folks who come from New Orleans telling me I've got to stop at Puglia's. Well, we just landed in New Orleans, made a quick pit stop in Metairie, and I'm not gonna get out of the state without scratching this place off my bucket list. Well, we're gonna head on inside, say hello to Anthony Puglia, as well as meet Charlie, who is now running the bass fishing department at Puglia's. Anthony has done a great job of outfitting this place with both some new school and old school tackle. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this one. Going on third generations now. Um, originally the store started in New Orleans in the Ninth Ward as a grocery store and a family sporting goods store. So um, I would probably say pushing 75 years and then my father owns this location which is our only location now. So we had New Orleans first then this in probably 69 or 68 opened up and then a West Bank store across the river as well. But this is the only remaining store, and this one is owned by my father, Tony Puglia. One of the, the family members, or several of the family members, uh, when they established down in New Orleans, uh, the grocery store, it was like the first uh, supermarket-sized grocery store. So like your bigger, you know, Schwegman's, Winn-Dixie, Rouse's, that, you know, Publix, that kind of grocery store. And then next door to that, they had a... Another relative had a uh, like an import-export business, so like a lot of um, Italian meats, wines, cheeses, things like that. And then next door to that, another relative opened up the sporting goods store. So I grew up saltwater fishing offshore mainly when I was uh, younger. Um, as I'm getting older, I can't take the offshore like I used to, so um, I do like to trout and redfish, but my favorite thing to do is sockle fish, and that is hands down. I'll travel the world to go catch sockle, and I'll travel the world fishing, you know, with the factories from, you know, Malaysia with Shimano to catch snakehead fish in the rivers to Costa Rica with another one, but my favorite is sockle or crappie white perch, not depending on where you're from. I've worked off and on my whole life in here, but uh, I would say probably I took over about 19 years ago from my father. Yep, he retired 19 years ago and he's living living the easy life now. You know, it's kind of an old saying, you know, listen to your customers, you know, uh, but that's extremely important in a business like this because, you know, I would say at least 70% of everything that's in the store is in the store because the customer said, hey, can you start carrying this? You know, or hey, I'm looking for this. Can you order me some? And we just, at that time, we just order, you know, the eight most popular colors of the fishing bait and put it in and go on from there. So, first off, 
we're in Louisiana. You really can't be here without talking about rattle traps. Yeah, so we supply all all the sizes of rattle traps, everything from the little bitty quarter ounces, eight ounces, all the way down to the big three quarter ounces. Um, everybody uses them around here for a lot of like trolling the trestles, stuff like that. Like the big three quarter ounces, like the big wild colors, a lot of pinks and chartreuses, guys will use to troll the trestles with. But um, the quarter ounce, you know, blue and chromes and the little bitty ones, I, I keep trying to push those on people just because they got the pedigree bottom catching everything that swims. So we just try to keep a healthy selection of rattle traps up and going. You got to pick one rattle trap. Which one is it? Which size? What color? Quarter on ounce, wall? blue and chrome. That'd be it. This one here? Yeah. Re so, so that's funny because that's a size I don't throw as much. I throw a ton of the half ounce just because... I don't know, maybe I can't cast that well enough. Around here, all the bait fish, a lot of the pogies and stuff around here, like even like in the freshwater fisheries, you know, the bass are all eating pogies. There's hardly any actual true shad around here. So that just matches a pogies profile way better. And you like the chrome, all, all the colors they got, and that's the old school when you go. Chrome right? and blue, man. You can't go wrong <laughs> with chrome and blue. <laughs> yeah, the Shimano, the world cranks Ooh. are killer. Ooh, yeah. Hold on. I've never actually seen that. Mm -hmm. I've seen Daiwa had a similar one, but I've never seen the Shimano. Yeah, so Daiwa's got like the evergreen um, stuff that they came out with. Okay. And it's, I mean, both of them are super cool. So you guys circuit are like board lips and stuff. Big on the Japan baits, man. I love trying, it. Trying, trying. It's tough. I mean, we're trying to get OSP in here, maybe some depths, but it's, it's, it's super hard to even find a rep or any anyone to work with us to get the stuff in here. So it's all been like the Mega Bass stuff was primarily us. You know, we didn't have a rep or anything to go through. Sweet. And then uh, their world pops are awesome. Do you look so what's this? this? That's Shimano's new popper. It has that flash boost Ooh. stuff in it. Flash? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like shaking. Yeah. So if you're if you're working it, you oh, pause it. That, that thing's going to keep on shimmying. So hold on. I'm going to shake it and stop. What? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. They have a jerk bait too. We're still trying to get the jerk baits in here, but Shimano's been kind of tough to get some stuff lately. So. Ooh. Ooh, that's a goodie. That's worth the price of admission right there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But we also have all the, you know, like the, the stuff that's got pedigrees on it. We got speed traps and the Norman, you yep. know, fat yep. boys and the speed the old speed trap. It's, so how do you like to throw a speed trap, by the way? Just burn it. <laughs> Just chuck it and, yeah. chuck it and wind it. It's a wintertime bait for me. So, because it doesn't have that wiggle of like a big O style fat body crank. Yeah, it's, it's got a more tighter. of a tighter, almost, almost borderline, like a flat side kind of action to it. Nice, but I mean, classic, if you get up on a riprap bank, I mean, it's 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 money, especially like the Carolina guys. That's like yeah. in in North and South Carolina and um, any of those East Coast types of fisheries, like Norman and all that stuff. That they that the speed trap is like gold over there. You can't even find them over there right now. What? So I've been having guys calling us up from North Carolina to, to purchase them. them. Yeah, <laughs> you just can't find them. Wow, that's wild. And that's another thing with us too. Like we we ship stuff all over the place, and I don't think people realize that. Like you can call us, and we'll we'll ship you stuff. Like just ask us if we have it. And if we don't, we can find it for you. And some other cool stuff. So, uh, you, do you throw a man's one mine as much? Um, I used to back in the day. I honestly haven't really messed around with it lately, and that's my own fault because it is such a good bait. Oh, look at that color. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. Little bubble gum action. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys throw them for redfish around here too, because it's it's the only crankbait you could th really throw in the marsh and get away with it, because you know you're fishing like a foot deep. Yep. You know. Okay. So it's just a, it's I mean it's that's that's the gold standard for a, a wake bait, and that's what everybody knocked every, all theirs off of, you know. And again, as far you're as like I'm smaller concerned. size of this one, right? Yeah. So that's I mean, why we only carry that one size. I, carry think, the, I guess that's the baby, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, the baby one marsh. I think they do make some bigger ones still, but we just, I mean. The, the small stuff just moves so much better. That's why all the bandits, we only have like the the, the 100 series. So, okay, you know? so question. So going from a, um, like a one minus to a bandit, what what hold is this fill? What gap is this fill? So that's going to be doesn't? like your four to six foot. Maybe not even six. It probably runs about four, I'd guess. So you basically know? a little bit deeper application. Now, could you still throw this for redfish? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've okay. slaughtered redfish. I, just, I keep trying to tell customers that because I primarily fish bass, but I've had killer redfish days on crankbaits because i mean it's perfect i mean you're mostly especially right now you're catching a lot of redfish around riprap banks and stuff so you can go and slaughter them on a square bill just make sure your hooks are up to par yeah. <laughs> so i'm seeing some weird baits that i've never seen before so what <laughs> how is, about that <laughs> what the heck is that we still don't know where those came from i think the rep just kind of filled out an order form Cyclone just to get them in here prop junior that looks like 
I, I, that's like a I think like that, a Spro bronze eye and a Whopper Plopper had a baby there. I know, and half a Buzz bait, <laughs> and I don't even know what's going on with that's it. That's glow. I like it though. Is that a hard bait? It is. A, I think. I, I think it's a hard bait. Yeah, it's a hard bait. Oh, that's not, so. Has anybody bought one yet? Yeah, it's it's. I don't know why, and I don't know if people are catching them on it, but it's they. A few of them have been selling. Like we actually just got more in. That's why we're all filled up. But I like the. Well, actually, hold on. I like that frog pattern. That's, super weird. Yeah, but that's. That's kind of slick. I like that. That would catch a Texas bass. Texas bass, probably. Yeah. Florida bass, definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then what about this thing? So I've seen, I have seen this one around a little bit. Mm -hmm, the Hellraiser. Hell yeah. So what? It's, it's like a chatterbait, but not really. Yeah. It's like a. I think they actually sink. I haven't thrown one yet, but I think they actually sink, and you have to keep it up like a buzz bait. But uh, I had one guy come in. And he was waylaying on the bass at City Park with him, and he said the thing looks like a lizard. Like if a lizard swimming around, you know how a lizard's got that, it's got that skip, that to it. undulum yeah. type. Yeah. He said that's exactly what it looks like. So I don't know. I haven't messed with him yet, but I imagine you probably catch a bunch of redfish on him. So it's a Z-man bait, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a chatterbait roots. But it's like ain't, a that ain't a chatterbait. It's like a topwater chatterbait. And look at the line tie. You tie it on way back here. Let's see that. Oh, you do tie it's it. It's so there. weird. So it just it. That's what I'm saying. It kind of comes up in 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 planes, kind of. It's really weird. That's wild. It's a pretty cool bait, though. And then you uh, got to have some devil horses. So, you know? Yeah, we can't be in Louisiana without talking about this uh, one. The old devil's horse. Especially if you go to Florida, like what you're talking about. You got to have a devil's horse. That's a good bait. So, do you throw a devil's horse? Yeah. yeah? I'll throw it around to spawn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you throw it on mono these days, or are you going braid for this? Um, I think it kind of depends on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing more open water stuff and I'm not having to deal with grass, grass patches, or anything that a fish can bury me up into, then I'll just throw mono. But um, around here, you'd probably be better off throwing on braid with like a short leader mm -hmm. in front of it. That's a classic though. I love that bait. Mm -hmm. And we just got scum frogs in finally. I don't know why it took so long to get those in. Yeah. But like that classic. See, I've caught. How many fish I've caught on black and yellow scum frog, dude? Point where it's like falling apart. Really? Oh, yeah. My main go to now is the Terminator stuff. And I still throw a spro and okay. whatever I have. So, but. why do you like a scum frog over a spro? They're cheap. <laughs> Seriously. I want to say we have the biggest Rapala section of any shop in Louisiana. Bass really? Pro included, yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm a lifelong Rapala fan. So when I came in here, one of the first things I wanted to do is beef up our Rapala section. The so original got, Floating Minnow, right? Yeah. That was the one. So what's your uh, go-to bait? you got to throw one, uh, one Rapala. One Rapala? It's going to be... The original float mena. In that size? In the F9 size. In the little size? In the little size on a spinning rod. So you must throw a lot of spinning rods, huh? No, it's about... You can throw... I throw maybe 30% of my stuff is spinning rods. Okay. But if I had to choose just one Rapala... That's the one. That would be it. Either that or probably a DT6. That's a, that's a goodie, though. I like that. The Marsh Demon stuff is really good. Uh, Delta Lures has a, a pretty good pedigree behind it. So is this Marsh it. Demon here? No, this is Marsh Demon here. Oh, this uh, these, these orange packages, and okay. then we got the Buzz Baits right behind you. So Marsh Demon, so is this a local company? Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure where at in Louisiana they're uh, Does it based say. out of. Does not say, but somewhere in Louisiana? Yeah. That's a nice little finesse spinner bait, actually. They are. I do like that. And that's that's going with the whole small bait thing, you know what I mean? Because all their buzz baits that they make, they're all eighth ounce, and I mean they're killer, man. And they make some crazy colors, you know, stuff that you just can't find anywhere else. Well, by the way, so right here, you don't see a blue spinner bait too much these days. You used to see a ton of blue spinner baits, mm -hmm. blue and green. Not so much anymore. Though. The black and blue stuff. I think lately a lot of night fishermen dudes are using that type of thing, but they're using them in bigger sizes. So, yeah. Oh, that's just throws cool. off a good silhouette. And then what about this? So Delta Lures. Well, first off, I'm gonna grab this one because it's got the old latex skirt yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> rubber skirt, man. The old rubber skirt. Yeah. I love that. So where's this one based out of? Uh, I want to say they're around. Doesn't say on the back. Laplace. Ooh, that's really cool though. Mm -hmm. So this is something you don't necessarily get to big box stores, like the local brands that just yeah. aren't gonna have the distribution nationally. So what's the deal with this? It's just it's just it's a different kind of flash, I guess, you know. But like those weird color blades and like the painted blades, you know? Even on the booyah stuff, I mean around here dude, you gotta have a painted blade on your on your tandem blade. 
So you gotta have one, at least one one of the blades yeah. painted. Okay. That's for redfish and bass. It just seems like you could fit a whole lot more. Okay. Our water's pretty. It's it's a you know. <laughs> I was driving over today. It is. It's it's dingy. You know, like clean water around here is like if you get a foot of visibility. <laughs> you know? And we try to keep a good selection of trailers, including Uncle Josh. Yeah, so I like the Uncle Josh <laughs> section, old school. <laughs> So you got so what do you got like the uh, black and blue? Yeah, we got like pattern. The, the typical ones that always sold back in the day. We got like the blue, the black and blue, the green frog. Um, I think that crawdad pattern and like some kind of brown pattern. I mean, you. Know, just, so when do you like to throw a pork versus uh, plastic? In the dead of winter, when it's like thirty degrees outside and it's miserable. And then, then throw that's when you throw a pork. Nice. Other than that, I don't touch it all year. Be honest. Wow. But you know what's weird is that. All throughout the year, I stick with the pork imitations, like the pro trailers and yeah. the, pro, the pro chunks from Zoom. In the pork shape. Right. But they're not pork. But they're not pork. I don't oh, know why. That's wild. I think, I don't know, I think even though it's the same shape, I think you get a little bit more action out of the, the uh, soft plastic version of the pork. But other than that, like, so when I'm throwing a jig all other times of the year, I'm throwing plastic, but I'm threading it instead of hanging it. So that way I, it skips a lot better and stuff. Like those those skinny pro chunks, Yeah. we're out of them right now. But you know the ones I'm talking about? Yes. If you thread one of those on, instead of hanging it, you can skip a, 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 a jig like a stone, dude. Oh, because yeah. it makes a nice planing bottom. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to just flapping around like a piece of chunk. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That on like a Buckeye Lures balling out jig, you can't, you can't go wrong. Ooh. All right, so behind you, I see another local company. What is this 392 baits? 392, I really don't know too much about. They do have some pretty interesting colors. I heard of guys no. catching speckle trout on those. I like that. little uh, mm -hmm. cotton candy action. That's and they cool. got the, the little bitty, the little bitty Senkos. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, little, little be little stick worms. They got the old school. Uh... Honestly, I like these guys. Old school colors. Mm -hmm. that. That's not a color you see in a. Like TV. those like tequila sunrise type of. Yeah. Old school worm just colors you know you just have a solid worm color that's just one color yeah nice if you had to pick one color worm what would you throw Ooh, one for color life worm motor oil motor oil good choice yeah just, yeah. just a good old school yeah. no frills because everyone else is going to throw a green pumpkin yeah so it's like you, you can get a watermelon you, flakes you can I'm, get it with motor oil and pretty much almost any water clarity too and if you want to do a chartreuse tail you could but honestly straight up motor oil Honestly, seven and a half inch culprit. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. When I came in, there was a customer called asking for black, oh, yeah. silver minnows. Black, silver minnows. And I've got a buddy in Florida who swears by these. So, so you guys have more than I've seen, actually. Yeah. I, I, I usually don't see the black. How come you can have them? And, I and what swear do you think by those them? only on certain days. Like today, if you see out the window, it's kind of overcasty and nasty. The black will outshine everything yeah it's I've, I've seen it happen dude time and time again i always have if i'm going red fishing dude i always have a black spoon on hand so my buddy ted his theory is that the black flashes but not as much so right. the fish don't get as good of a look at it. it sneaks up on them a little bit better i think that's what it is it's more of a surprise factor you yep. know he'll fish this thing like on top with a little trailer over weeds and then let it sink mm -hmm. and then for largemouth but for redfish you like the black too that's oh, wild yeah. I like oh, yeah. that. I went to Gunnersville a while back. Uh, it was me and my buddy Jack, and I brought some silver minnows, and we were wailing on them, dude. I don't think them bass knew what was going on, dude. They probably never seen a silver minnow. I know. <laughs> During Gunnersville, who's throwing a spoon? No. We we're, were throwing it over, like, around Millfold and no. stuff. And just All right. Killing. And actually, so another obscure color. It shouldn't be, but copper. You, ne you see a silver yeah. or a gold, you never see a copper. I've honestly never messed with the copper ones. I think it's a confidence thing with me. Maybe I should though. It's just so different. It just looks it is. different, doesn't it? It's a whole different. It's almost like halfway between a black and a gold. Yeah, it's, that's it's... what I, I, I acclimate it to. It was silver for trout, but that's, I don't know. I've never, I've never had really good success throwing spoons for trout. It's always more of a redfish type of deal. You know? Okay. Now, do you go trailer on a uh, silver minnow? I don't. So just you go straight just up? Just bare. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Because now that you got the pork, you know, you could go pork I and could, spoon. Just could. Just saying. L little frog pattern <laughs> on there. And you really fish it old school. <laughs> and we've been hearing good things about these old Bagley's, too. The Bagley, the hammer finishes. So this is 
sort of on the theme of the finessey stuff. This actually looks a little bit more finessey than a silver mm -hmm. minnow to me. Uh, just I don't know, a little bit, a little bit more petite. Yeah. I like the hammered finish though. Yeah. I've uh, I mean we're we're out of like almost all of them we right now. We have three so. left. Yeah. <laughs> so they're apparently working for somebody somewhere. The little Cleos though, man, those that, those are badass spoons, dude. The Acme spoon company. Yeah. Okay, so in this variety, um, I tend to throw a lot of Epping or Daredevils. Oh yeah. Um, which is probably the version of like a little Clio. It's You're the right. same sort of it's got that the weight spoon. to it. Yeah, it's yeah. got that weight. But that thing's probably what's that? A half an ounce, two fifths of an ounce. That's yeah. actually my size. I love, oh, dude, two fifths of an ounce spoon. And you, you can throw them a country mile. I love that, especially if you're fishing on the beach or something. You need to make a long. You can and get out there. Talk about catching anything. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You can catch anything on yeah. a spoon. I mean, it just represents just it's the perfect size little bait fish. It's a little Clio. I like that one from mm -hmm. Acme. And this is another one. The so Sidewinders. The yeah. Sidewinder. That's an old school spoon. That's an old school spoon there. Look at that. <laughs> and this one's a third of an ounce. So this is definitely a little bit lighter of a spoon. Yeah. So you got to fish keep it up, up a little Keep yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so mirror I've lure. never seen this many mirror lures in my life. We have a very stout mirror lure thanks to our <laughs> guy Matt that works here. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. look at that. that is just Anything that. and everything. Wow. That's, I, don't, I can't even get into it. There's just <laughs> so yeah. much. All right, so I'm going to pull it. You ever throw in the uh, purple mirror lure? No, um, especially in that model. That's like that twitch bait type. It of, is. I've never really gotten into those. I got into these guys for a while. Those work pretty good. They still have that same Which like, little, little pogey profile. Okay, yeah. The little Meridines, yeah. So how come nobody throws a mirror lure for largemouth? I really don't know. I think it's. I think it just I think it would it, work, right? It, it should. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a twitch bait, and even like... Um, I've thrown the Rapala's Rapala version. Rapala makes something like this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was going to say. So. Yep. I've thrown those, and I've, I've caught bass out in Texas and all over the place, man, all over the country on them. So I'm also noticing a theme here at Puglia's on the color. Y'all have a lot of purple. A lot of purple. Is that is that because we're in Louisiana, or is it because purple I, th I think I think it's a Louisiana thing, man, because purple's a, just a standby color for redfish. I think it's just it's like it, a, an but, official state color, too, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's mostly dirty water, though. Okay. You think about it, you know, like black and purple. So nothing to do with Mardi Gras. Purple at all, and just. chartreuse. I mean, you could, I guess you could feel it. It's a Mardi Gras <laughs> LSU or something. Uh, it's too funny. But yeah, all the like the purples, the pinks, wow. chartreuses, oranges. Wow. It's just people got to have them, you know. Everything is double pegged for H and H. That's a deal that H and H set with uh, Pugilas way back in the day. So we we upheld that. So wait, what's double peg mean? So like we have, um, like these guys, it's two by two. So it's basically double stock at all times. Oh, yeah. gotcha. And we've we've upheld that tradition with Pugilas for ever. So that so so basically, you will always have. We always got H and H on hand, and a lot of it, and it sells, man. They still got guys throwing, you know, shad rigs and. The old well, specializers and, can, and stuff. So, and again, this is probably not obscure here, but obscure to me. I never see this thing anywhere. What you like, got there? Oh yeah, the specializers. What is that? I think it's just a rendition. It's like it's like what came from the shad rig. These came out a few years after. Ooh. I like the old school spots. They but work, yeah, I mean, man. everywhere else you see the spinner baits, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't see this level of H and H. Yeah. This is a uh, a deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> It's a slow burn to go through all of this, for sure. But it still works great, you know? People catch the crap out of trout and redfish on, on, on all this stuff still. And nowadays, it's like the ghost minnows are starting to, or the glass minnows are starting to. So what's that? It's just a newer, like a tandem Ooh, rig. okay. Mm -hmm. I think guys are throwing these smaller ones for uh, trout under the lights at night, you Ooh. know? So is H and H primarily a trout bait? No, it's trout and redfish. Trout okay. and redfish and flounder and whatever else swims in the marshes will probably at one time or another eat H and H. Got the cheetah rigs for flounder. <laughs> See the little bitty, I, a little little treble hook on yeah. the back. So that's almost like a weedless treble hook too. Almost, probably, almost. Yeah, but still. That's Imagine so Ned cool. rigging that. So tell me about the beetle, because that's one where <laughs> it reminds you of like an old school beetle spin. It's all it is, but that's that's one of the first soft plastic lures that ever came out for 
primarily for trout. Dude, I love that color. Mm -hmm. That green sparkle. Yeah, that dark green type of sparkle. I mean, that and the, like the chartreuse. I mean, you can't really. That's that's a staple. That's been a staple for years. So, do you like to fish this on a spinner or just a jig head? Just a jig head if I'm fishing for trout. Okay. I like that though. That's nice. That green. So, what's your favorite color though? Probably that chartreuse. Chartreuse and red for a sparkle bill. That's that's when so you think of a sparkle bill. That's the color that you think of. Yeah, that little red dot though. Mm -hmm. I like that. It just represents a shrimp popping around, you know, freaking out. And what about these guys? The, 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 the slicks? I don't really know a whole lot about Matt got those in here for us. And uh, I think they've got a good following uh, for so the Texas So it looks like guys. a Bobby Brown kind of, right? Almost, yeah. It's like an unrigged Bobby Brown. And yeah. it's got that um, the little ball on the end. It does have a little ball on the end. But from what I know, I think that's like a Galveston Bay type of deal. Like, dude's catching mag trout out there on them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they sell. You know, people are buying them up, so I guess they're they're starting to catch on over here. But that's one that that could be to me could be a crossover bait for largemouth. It could, you know, it could definitely be a crossover bait for largemouth. These mirror lures. Ooh. It's almost like a a, a cut down sluggo. Ooh. Yeah. You could rig that. You could Ned rig that. You could sluggo rig Carolina that. Carolina rig it. Carolina rig it. And what is that called? So it's the little John. Yeah. Those are legendary too. Those have been around a long time. Ooh, okay. That was uh, donated to us by, I can't remember who gave that to us. So it's one of our customers. He was All generous right. enough to make this little frame and hang a bunch of old old wow. baits up on it. I just want to know how many lures you can name. Original hula popper. You All know, right, there's one. There's one. Devil's horses, you know. I think these guys are, what are these guys called? Like Creek Chubs or something like that? I can't remember. So oh, that. he's got the name on this one. Let's see what it is. The River Run. Yeah. That's a River Run. Um, I see a opposed ace in the hole. There you go. Bomber. This looks like some sort of Shakespeare deal there. Oh, uh, no, that's a jitterbug. That, that's a cheek bug, uh, creek chub. There's a jitterbug. Tad Polly. I don't know what that is. Another river runt. Another jitterbug. There's a lucky 13. There's a bassarino. Ooh, this one is, I should know what that, I forgot what that one is. A lucky 13. Another plug there. I don't that's know what that. That's pretty cool. That's an old one. Yeah. Um, a lot of river runs and a lot of this one's the same brand as that other one. Sorry. That might be a, I don't know if that's a Florida lure or what that is. That's very bottom. cool. And then that is a, a lazy Ike. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. That is like some old school stuff there. Oh, yeah. So, so, wait, so where did you guys get this? Oh, one of our customers made that for us. I can't remember what we did. I think we did some kind of favor for him or something. And he hooked us up with that. I feel like you should take one of those lures out and catch a fish on it and just put the photo there. <laughs> <laughs> you use the hula popper, man. That'd be the one. Well, you, honestly, you just steal one of them skirts from that uh, those tube skirts. I know. Throw that sucker on there? Yeah, just throw a, a freaking sockily tube on the back and call I, it a day. I bet you could catch a redfish on a hula popper. Oh, dude, I've caught redfish on... <laughs> I've had redfish attack popping corks and stuff. They're not the smartest animal in the world, you know what I mean? So how long have you been working here? Uh, almost two years. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. And it started out, I used to be a, I was, I, I used to be a railroader, and uh, I quit my job because they, they weren't allowing me to fish tournaments anymore. So I walked away from $40 an hour to come, not necessarily to come here, but to fish tournaments. And money got tight. So I became a real estate agent thinking I was going to make some bucks and it never, it never panned out. It was just wasn't for me. And then, uh, I came here thinking that I just need something to float me by. And now it's, it's this is like the, the most baddest ass job I've ever had. It's a cool place to hang out. Oh, you, get to, you get to hang out here every and day. And I love, I love helping out people and helping people catch fish, you know, especially like kids or, you know, people just getting into it or something, you know, it's, it gives you a good feeling at the end of the day. When the Deepwater Horizon oil rig blew up, they decided to do a movie about it. And Kurt, um, Mark Wahlberg was one of the main characters, and then his wife um, was another character. And the producers, or clothing people for the movie, came in and they they asked for Pugilist shirts. And I was like, and they asked for like free. I was like, well, I mean, they're 19.99, you know? And they're like, no, we're gonna put them in a movie. I'm like. Mm. It's still gonna be 1999 because I didn't believe him. Yeah, you know? 
<laughs> and uh, I said, what movie? And they said, we're filming the movie Deepwater Horizon. I said, okay. And they said, um, I said, well, why, why, who's, what, who's wearing a Pugilist shirt? And they said, we want the main character, the wife of Mark, to wear the Pugilist shirt. They wanted something authentic to this area. So Mark was wearing LSU, and his wife in the movie wore Pugilist t-shirt throughout the movie. So if you want to pull a clip of that, <laughs> it's, so, it's all through the movie. I so, thought that was the coolest freaking thing. So I think it's cool that you charged them for it, though. So did you get your nineteen ninety nine? No, no, I didn't charge them for it. I believed them. They made a believable case. <laughs> so I didn't charge them. I was getting phone calls all freaking day long. Like, I didn't think it was going to happen. And then someone called me like, yeah, I just saw a, a commercial on TV about the new movie coming out. And you're all over it on Kate Hudson. <laughs> oh, dude, we were shipping them to California. It was on the front page of LA, the LA newspaper. That yeah. So how can you don't have like that picture framed somewhere? That'd be that'd be. I don't a, know. If this is my tackle shop, I'm just saying. I'd probably have that up on the wall somewhere. That's probably Dude. a good idea. Yeah, you should probably do that. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.